really excited about this week. This week, we are talking about containers. So today's Wednesday, and we're talking about uh, information in the industry that's come out um, regarding the performance of container sites in the last year, 2021. So I want to go through that because I think there's some nuggets there. And on Friday, what we're going to do is talk about my site, Beverly24. Dot co at UK and how how much it makes, how much the rent is, etc. Just tell you absolutely everything from last year, the net profit, and I'm not going to hold anything back because I realise that I don't really talk about the container site anymore because it's a little bit boring. Well, it, it's kind of boring because it's no excitement, it's it's maturity, um, it fluctuates in in occupancy, but what it does, it keeps performing, it keeps shelling out cash and. The reason I want to shed a light on containers this week is because I think they were overlooked. I think there is an element of, dare I say it, snobbery in the industry about containers. Yes, they are cheaper. Yes, it brings in more competition. Yes, it's harder to compete because container prices are cheaper than indoor prices. And do you know what? Some people prefer it. Some people just prefer driving up to your unit and unloading the stuff rather than going in, into your room, unlocking your room, getting a trolley out, bringing your trolley to the car, unloading your car onto the trolley, and then pushing your trolley in and unloading the trolley onto into your unit. Some people would just prefer just driving up. And so I think, how basically, how dare we? Call, how, why, why should we decide what the customer wants? Surely we should offer what the customer wants. We should go where the customer wants us to go, meet the customers where they want to be met. And... Yes, there's been a massive rise recently in container sites, and that is down to the fact that we can get a foothold into the industry very, very quickly. You can have asset finance. You don't need a lot of money to, when I first opened Willoughby, Jesus Christ, it was a million pounds. It was a million pounds that I needed to, to fit it out. And that's not even considering the um, cash flow position you'd be in. You'd be in a negative cash flow for a certain period of time. So it's a lot, it's, it's, a, it's a big investment. It's a big damn investment. Yes, now it's doing like 40% returns, which is fantastic, but we're past that critical point. A lot of people who want to come into the industry can't get in, into the industry because of that, of the moat, of the protection, of that barrier to entry, the cash. However, with containers, that barrier to entry is softened. And I'm not saying that everybody should be opening container sites because I do believe that container sites are going to become more and more popular because of the reasons, because it's a small barrier to entry. There will be more and more people. So again, we're going to have to find a way to stand out. But I don't want you, the listener, to overlook container sites. We don't want to be snobbery. Why? We don't want to have an element of snobbery about us because ultimately, what are we in business for? We're in business to make money. And containers are very, very safe, the secure, the protect people's belongings. So it ticks all the boxes. And so what we need to do is ultimately in business to maximize a return. That's what you want to do. That's what I want to do. I want to provide a fantastic lifestyle for my kids and for my family and help out charities where I can. And I can do that by leveraging my business and making as much money as possible. And that's why I don't believe that we should overlook container sites. I, right now, there's a massive void in the container industry. There is no number one, or there, there's no number one that stands out. There's people with 20 sites, but there's no big yellow. There's no safe stall. There's no massive shore guard. There's nothing like that in the outdoor space. And so there's a room for somebody to come in and take over and literally have a very, very profitable business. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this episode, I am going to go through uh, the CSTA, that's the Container Self Storage and Traders Association. I'm going to go through their results um, last year. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there's there's nine there's nine points that i was when i was going for the report i was looking at it and by the way it's nowhere near as good as the proper self-storage association report nowhere near but it's trying it's getting as much information from as many sites as possible as many locations as possible and it's providing us some data and you know me i love my data so i thought it'd be interesting to go through it this week because i know so many people are looking at coming in self-storage who are coming to this podcast and listen to this podcast and want to know more about self-storage and ultimately the way that people are going to get into self-storage probably on the first try is by a container site that's what we did and then we got two outdoor sites uh two sorry two indoor sites and then we're going back to containers sunderland is going to be a container site or a, a drive up units, uh, external unit sites. And I'm really, really excited by it because I know it's going to cash flow very, very quickly. There is a small element of risk. That is it. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm all over container sites. Um, I mentor a few people now. Um, and what they've been doing is they've been looking for container sites. And I've been down and had a look and thought, yeah, do you know what? This is going to do well as a container site. Uh, there is a container site for sale in Blackburn. Uh, 
called Primrose Self Storage uh, for 350 grand. If anybody is interested, I'm, I've got no association with them whatsoever. It's too dear. I think for, from reading between the lines on the broker site, it probably makes around 40 grand a year. Um, and they want 350. So as we know, it's it's too expensive for a container site, but there's massive potential there. The website can be improved. There's there's a whole host of added value that you could give. There's no insurance. They're very, very cheap. You can increase prices. So yeah, Primo's self-storage is for sale at the minute. I, I, I'm a bit of a geek. I like looking at different places for sale. And uh, yeah, knowing, I like to look at all different self-storages. Um, at the minute, my VA is actually putting down every single container site in the UK because I want to ultimately go and drive around. One day, I want to go to Cumbria, for example, and go to every outdoor. I just want to, I, I love it. I love it. So it's... That's my enjoyment. All right, okay, on to the report. And I've only got five minutes because I'm taking my kid to football. It is Saturday morning when I'm recording this. Right, so Container Self Storage and Traders Association. Um, there is 978 container sites in the UK that they've found. That is, and that comprises of 572 companies, which means that each company averages 1.71 sites per company. On average, they have 132 units. 132 units on each site, um, which is it's, it's small in the out, it, small in the indoor sites, uh, but it's actually bigger than mine. Here's some information here. So um, 132 units on average, um, and we'll go to the revenue in a minute. But I just want to say the revenue. So that's so that's more units than I've got. I've got 87 units, um, and the revenue average revenue is 107,000 pound. I turn up, so I've got less units. And I turned over around about 140,000. I don't know exactly in 2021 what I turned over, but I'll, I'll go through that on, on Friday. So we've got less units and we take more revenue. We take nearly 40% more revenue than, than these. And we've got nearly 40% less. So what does that tell you? It tells you that people aren't doing revenue management properly for container sites. It means there is a lot of added value that you can do. You can come, you can buy a container site and you can add the value. You can increase the price. You can do revenue management. You can put insurance on. We're going to get to insurance in a minute as well. But it just tells me that the container sites aren't as mature um, as or, or aren't run as professionally. I don't want to insult any container sites. Um, but ultimately, indoor self-storage, we are very, very good at maximizing our revenue. Most of us, most good operator, most big operators are very good at maximizing the revenue. It tells me here that container sites just don't maximize the revenue. So there's a massive, there's a massive added value that we can do, add value strategy. So what about um, the occupancy? Well, here we go. Nine, on average, 93.8% occupied are container sites. That is bananas. And it's much higher than indoor storage, but let's not forget indoor storage has more square footage. So there is there is that reason as well, uh, because I think on average, it's about 10,400 square foot or somewhere on there about 10,000 square foot um, each container site has. So that means, you know, 9,000 odd um, square foot is occupied, which that would be a very, very, very small self-storage indoor facility. It'd be one of the smaller ones. Um, the, the average... Stay is 38.9 weeks. So I think that's pretty good. 38.9 weeks. Um, it'd be interesting to see what it is for indoor storage. I can't actually remember now, but if it is more, maybe it's more because of a price, because it's cheaper. And what's that great quote uh, that I said last week? Um, I, I didn't say it, I copied off somebody else. <laughs> um, chain is the price you pay for high rates. Chain is the price you pay for high square footage. And obviously, as we can tell here, it's not high rates. And talking about rates, the average price, excluding VAT for a container, is £30.20 pence per week. That is really cheap. We charge £50 per week for a container at Stormall. I think, is it 50? 40? I don't know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's really, really cheap. Um, and that's excluding VAT. And as you know, the average revenue for each site is 107000 That's good. But that is really, really good. Although I do believe you can increase it if you just um, use a little bit of, of intelligence and uh, revenue management. I, I think you could increase that. Of course you could. But if you think about £107,000, you're, you're not going to be paying more than £20,000 rent. for. It's unlikely to be paying 20, more than £20,000 £20, £20, for rent. Your rates are going to be 10000 So there's 30000 Then if you run it yourself or it doesn't take many hours, we're going to get to that on Friday's episode, how many hours we actually spend on Beverly. And it doesn't take a lot of time to, to run Beverly. And so I, I believe you can 
you know, each site should be at least netting 50 grand, at least. And this is just the average. If you listen to this podcast, I'll guarantee you one thing, you will be better than average because most people who uh, have got container sites will not listen to this podcast, will not educate themselves, and therefore will not be utilizing their asset that they've got. And so you'll be better than average. So you, every site should be making 50,000 pound net every single year. Um, so the rate increase from 2020 to 2021 went up 15%. That's interesting. So 15% increase, that is higher than inflation, um, obviously. Um, although maybe, maybe not anymore. Right, so 69% domestic customers, 31% business customers. And here's something that blew my mind, and then I'm going to have to shoot, is 48% of container sites, don't, only 48% of container sites offer insurance. 52% of container sites don't offer insurance. My mind is blown. We make around about, just in an 87 units, £15,000 a year on insurance. I'll tell you the exact figure in Friday's episode. Fifth, you're missing out. They're missing out on 50, 52% of people are missing out on 15 grand a year. And that's, and by the way, you should, you could almost double that because it, the average units are 132. So you can all, you'd be 25,000 pound on, on, on 132 site. You should, 132 unit site, you should be making 25 grand a year on insurance. And they're missing out on it. Absolutely mind blown. And I put here a little note, as ever, I will test the container site, start from scratch. I will document the whole process. We will be opening up in the next, I, I would say definitely three months we'll be opening up in Sunderland. I'm excited. The one thing I know I put here, it won't lose money. That's for sure. It's a no brainer. And I'll document the whole process because it will be, I'll have no SEO. I'll have no, uh, nobody will know me in the area because it's, we're going two hours, two and a half hours away from my nearest store. We'll have nobody there. It's going to be manless. It's going to be run from afar. And I'm going to document the whole process. I cannot wait. I'm so excited by it. It will net after year two, 75 grand a year. Convinced. Absolutely convinced. It's not, not massive money, obviously, but it just adds to the pot, adds to the pot, adds to the pot. And in uh, 2023, I want to be, or 2024, latest, I want to have a million pound a year company net profit, which it's going to be 2023 or 2024 uh, we'll get there, depending on how well they fill up. Um, yeah, it just adds to the pot, 75 grand, and we can have another one, 75 grand, or 100 grand, or whatever it may be. Um, so on uh, Friday, I will tell you all my numbers for Beverly. I'm super, super, super duper excited to tell you all that, because um, I just I just think that it's given me such a fantastic life, and if, it can, if this podcast or anything can help you guys a little bit, a step on the, on the way to owning the self-storage, whether indoor or outdoor. And by the way, ultimately, I prefer indoor because you can, there's a better, there's, a, there's, a, there's an exit strategy for indoor. There isn't really an exit strategy. I know some people who are trying to sell outdoor container sites um, have, have a head on the great band, so I'm not 100% certain, but they've got maybe five or six container sites and their valuation is there and people are valuing it there. So there's a bigger valuation for indoor sites. So my strategy is ultimately indoor sites, but my strategy for right now is cash flow because I need the cash flow to be able to afford that million pound site, that million pound Willoughby again. Um, and without the cash flow, I can't do it. So therefore I need cash flow. Like probably you listen to this will need cash flow. So therefore a container site is a great, great way into the industry. All right, guys, girls, I'm out of here. Bye.